Well, you know, uh, this is just so awesome to be in part of God's family because family is, well, we hate to admit it, but it's messy. But, you know, unless there's grace and we fail and we fumble and we mess up, if we do not receive grace from one another, we cannot dish it out. And this is why we're here. This is why uh, we worship at home. Uh, this is, I mean, we see it in the Acts model where people worship at home because we can be open and vulnerable and transparent instead of um, closed off. It just goes into the message of um, uh, the main text is 1 John 3.16. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the precious oil of rebuke. Thank you, Jesus, so much for being that laughing stock to the world, that ensign of what you thought of the flesh. You thought of it as wretched and deserving a criminal death. Thank you, Jesus, for taking that which we deserve upon your body, experiencing anguish externally and internally in your soul to where you cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Holy Spirit, use these words that you want to, they're your words that you want to deliver to us about love. In Jesus' name. Stir in our hearts. May we know how to um, take what you've given us, internalize it, and produce an outflow of fruit bearing 30, 60, and 100 fold to those around us, uh, between you and, and us, uh, between you and, and us individually and then corporately. Jesus, I pray that. We would be so sensitive that we would be prepared to know how to pour out like you did, whether in heart or in body, or maybe even both. In Jesus' name, amen. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has this world's goods and sees his brother in need, but closes his eyes to him, to his need, how can God's love in, uh, reside in him? Little children, we must not love with word or speech, but with truth and action. This is how we will know we belong to the truth and we will convince our conscience in his presence. Even if our conscience condemns us, that God is greater than our conscience and he knows all things. So, you know, the... the God's love uh, has been spoken to us through the ages. And yet, there's a satanic, spiritual smog of sin. God says, I love you so much. And we hear in our ears, I love you if, because of the satanic smog. And because of that, God says, this way is I'll prove my love. I'll pour out my life on the cross as a criminal, as a rebel to the state, doing nothing wrong. In fact, we were listening to just a moment ago on um, Alpha and Omega Productions, the sound clip, the most dramatic, uh, most epic reading of the scripture uh, done by John Piper. And I'll put that link in the description. Um, he says in Romans 5, this message is, message is entitled, Do you have the love of God in you as God so loved the world? In Romans 5, verse 6, while we were still helpless, 
at the appointed moment. Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from wrath. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more having been reconciled will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have now received reconciliation, this reconciliation through him. So, paint you a picture. In the Old Testament, there was this system. If you see, the term sin in Hebrew is chata'a. It's, it's a word to mean, oops, I missed the mark. I need to turn and fix it. Even the section of unintentional sin, where it was revealed to you, hey, you just stole that guy's property, and it was like five years later. Oh, shoot, you need to make recon reconciliation for that. Okay, there was, there was a specific offering for that. What about the ones who are fist shakers at God? Who says, no God. I love this, the, the movie Facing the Giants. Uh, the football player, Matt Prater, he sees his, his dad coming to pick him up. And he sort of groans. And his dad says, Matt, you're coming with me. He says, no, Dad. He says, he's like, I'm going, I'm going with my friends. He says... No, you come in here. No, I'll see you later. That's that's what we do to God all the time. I'd rather go do something else. He says, you know, the, the, the father says, you're coming with me. Now, God is a good father. Where he says, I'm going this way. No, I, I got something better to do. So... That's rebellion. The scriptures say you deserve death. You deserve stoning. There is no provision for the one who is openly rebellious. There's a section in scripture, I don't know off the top of my head, where there's a provision for a rebellious son, where the parents are told to bring them before the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin, the court, the, the elders. Our son is a glutton and a drunkard. And he's lazy. And this is for an adult. Okay. The elders put him to trial. They find him guilty. And they stone him to death. So... We deserve that. We, that's being an enemy. Enemy to the state. Enemy to God's kingdom. Deuteronomy 21.18 21, is that passage. Thank you, uh, brother. Uh, so, that that's a death penalty. The fact that we even disobeyed from Genesis 3. God said, don't eat the fruit for in that day you surely die we did eve was deceived adam chose to disobey Boom. death separation and it, it was a constant attempt to keep trying to get back to that position of being with god being with daddy and having his heart and him having our hearts and from that moment on, we didn't have God's heart. He longed for us. But we didn't have his heart prior to Christ. He said, this is what I'm... And he kept giving hints. This is what love is. Watch me. I pour out for you. 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 It hurts me. I keep coming to you. I keep coming to you. 
I'm inconvenienced. I'm willing to take the hurt. Christ comes on the scene. And the very punishment that we deserve, he takes it. Jesus says, I, I do what I see my Father do. Folks, Jesus hung on the cross. God the Father gave of himself in the garden in Genesis 1 and 2 in creating man. He gave of himself to create us. And we spit in his face. We took him lightly. And as a result, there have, been, there have been troubles. And the whole time, God still pours out blessing. I'll still rescue you, Israel. Not because of you, but because of promise I made to your forefathers. You are a stiff-necked people, but I'll still pour out. It hurts me to pour out, but I do it. We don't understand love. It's not seen. We don't know how to... Uh, what it means tangibly, you know, what does it look like, Erez? What does love look like? The fact that you lose, you lose some sleep, three o'clock in the morning, your kid gets up, Daddy had a scary dream, go and comfort him, teach him, train him, pray with him, even though you're tired, go back to bed. Cries again, 15 minutes later, get up, go back to bed. Cries again 15 minutes later. That's enough to make anybody go batty. And sleep deprivation is a serious thing. That part that hurts your heart, that's the pouring out God wants. Every time, it wasn't so much the cross that was painful to Christ. It was very painful. That was just a culmination of everything he experienced. But what about the three years where people kept following and following in John 6. This is a hard, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. Suffer with me, he was saying. Anguish with me. You'll, you will have joy hundredfold and eternal life. A hundredfold here. I mean, you will have whatever you need here. I'm not preaching prosperity. No, I'm preaching you will have your needs met. You'll have your... The protection of God, the peace of God, you will be provided for. I have seen it in my own life. We have seen miraculous stories uh, in other saints of provision, protection. You have what you need, not to gratify yourself, not to say, hey, I, I want a million dollars in a safe bank, you know, in a full bank account, 401k, college education for my kids. No. That, that, that's based on what we think. No, how God says. But that part, that, that, that hurt, that, that is deep down in your belly. See, spiritual things cannot be described by physical words, fleshly words. See, English is a physical construct mentally for people of the world to understand. But the spirit behind them, you can't talk about in definite terms because they are of spiritual nature. Paul says, that which is of spirit is spirit. The fleshly man cannot discern it because they are of a different substance. But it's that part of you. I can describe all around it. It's like, how do I describe the wind hitting the trees? You can't see the wind. But you know the tree is affected by the wind. Okay? Same thing. You can't see the anguish, like grab it like a cup, but you can talk about it in the effects on a person. It hurt Jesus. The rich young ruler said, This is too much. The disciples who left him in John 6, I, hard, I, I can't do this. How do you think Jesus felt? Did he say, you know what? Forget it. And you guys who are following me, never mind. You probably don't want to follow me either. And walked away. He didn't say that. 
He knew his mission and he kept going. He did look at them and said, so are you going to follow me too? Or are you going to fall away too? They knew he had something. And yet he still had anguish. He said, but one of you is going to betray me. I did choose you, but one of you is going to betray me. Guys, how does it feel to be betrayed? Good? No. It's painful. It's painful to be betrayed. Jesus was betrayed. Betrayed by his best friend Peter. One of his best friends. Judas. And yet he still died for them. That part in you that hurts. If somebody, has somebody betrayed you and you've not forgiven them? Has somebody hurt you and, and you've not said, I love you, I'm still going to pray for you? Has somebody let you down and you still won't let it go? Let it go because God did and he, and he still reached out. That part that I'm describing, you know, we all have certain emotional issues and if it sparks something in your being where it's like, ooh, Eris, stop, I don't want to hear this, or, or you just tune out, or, or, or something pricks you, like, ooh, like you feel that in your, in your gut, and rightfully so. Or if, if, if you get convicted of sin, like, man, I shouldn't have said that about that person. That, that part of you, when you want to stuff it, not listen to it, and just go on, that's shutting off your conscience. That's your intuition. Watchman Nee calls it the conscience. That, that's, that's your spirit. The conscience, intuition. And that's that part that you have communion with the Lord. Okay. Out of the belly, river shall flow living water. Okay. That's where your spirit resides. Okay. That part of you, that twinge. That's a part that the spirit is saying, deal with me. Deal with this. I want to grow in Jesus. I want to see the Lord. And that flesh says, shut up, shut up, shut up. I got, I got my own thing here. Like my own hurt. My own inconvenience. I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to forgive that person. I don't want to have to discipline my child for the upteenth time in the row. I don't want to have to fill in the blank. I'm in the middle of doing something. I don't want to have to stop, take time, go and fix a problem. I don't want to have to resolve another fight. I don't want to have to take the time and communicate and, and work on communication. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. I'm hungry. I don't want to have to stop and reconcile. I have people coming over. I don't want to deal with that person. I don't like that person. I don't like the fact she called me a Jezebel. I don't like this person who called me a baloney stinker. The fact that he doesn't listen to me. Folks, these are examples. Naturally speaking, we don't. We don't want to be put out. And God put out for us. We were just like that. And he poured out. He said, this is how we know what love is. That Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. You want the definition of love? There is an absolute definition. Right there, 1 John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. How did he love the world? He gave of his very precious substance. And then we see in 1 John, how did he love the world? He gave of his very precious substance. His, his, his very heart, his very emotion, his very blood. That's how he did it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. We heard this too. If I speak human or angelic languages... Or shall we say tongues? Oh, you could be praying in tongues all the time and you don't have love. Where love is a pouring out. 
It is an emotional, internal pouring out. This is what love is. Okay? If you don't have that, it's, it's, it is noise. It is raucous. Is there bitterness? Is there jealousy? We'll get to that. I'm a sounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith so that I can move mountains. I love that side note about mountains. That's kingdoms. That's spheres. No, 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 Tim. No. If I can do all that, but I don't have love, like I'm a awesome prayer warrior, but but like let's say I'm praying, oh Lord, hallelujah, tear down this you know the media or whoever you know this kingdom and, and that you know child sit down you know okay that that's that's not really loving okay yeah you're inconvenienced your child's pulling at you saying I got a problem I need to go body. You know, they're pulling out your shirt and you're like, stop it, I'm praying. I'm doing this holy thing. But yet, your child is given to you to show you your need that you don't have the love of God in you. How many times God stops for us just to hear the cries of his children? Father, I'm scared. Does he not stop? Jesus is always interceding before us as, a, as our high priest. Does he not stop and take time and listen to us? But do not have love, I'm nothing. If I donate all my goods to feed the poor, you know, I've, I, uh, and if I give my body in order to boast, uh, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You know, I've, I've heard of, and, and this is um, where it breaks my heart when and, and the Lord stopped me. There are folk in ministry that are, uh, and, and God called them, and, and I'm not, this is not an indictment at all, but let me challenge you. Is what you're doing in ministry, are you certain this is between you and the Lord, and the Lord has told you to do the X, Y, Z, what, whatever, to the detriment of your kids? Are your kids getting you? Do they have your heart? Or, they, or do they just feel like, ah, dad is doing that whole church thing? Our primary responsibility is to our children. It's to our spouses. You know, if, if all you have is one child and your spouse, and you have no, oh, you know, preaching ministry or any other ministry, and yet you are with them and you're, you're, you pray with them, you tell them about the Lord's things. You live your life out transparently. They'll see that more than anything you can tell them. Okay? Give of yourself. But if I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. We could all use a little more patience. You know... How many times, yeah, I, I talk in terms of, 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 of kids because I think that's probably the biggest one that we can understand. Or how many times kid has a mess, okay, got to go clean it up again. They drop their pencils again. You want to tell them, would you stop dropping your pencils and stop making messes? <sighs> Guys. God, you know, God could say the same to us. Would you people stop messing my creation? Would you stop hurting your brothers? Don't you see you're killing one another? And yet we do the same thing to our kids. You know, we'll, we'll smack them on the arm and say, stop hating your brother. Now, is that kind? Love is kind. Well, he's got... He's got a better house than I do. He's got more toys than I do. He's got a... And I really want... Man, if only I had a... Maybe we can get more on, on debt. And God says, Haven't I given you everything you need? 
Love doesn't envy. You just saw a fellow ministry worker have a, or a friend get a brand new car or a new house. Are you happy for that person? Or do you want what they have? It's not boastful. Oh man, I've, well, you, you know, like let's uh, example, a person comes and says, hey man, I want to share this really cool thing. I was able to give a Bible tract to, to a person uh, at the cashier at the uh, grocery store. Oh, well, I gave about 30 today. You just destroyed your brother. Now I'm giving examples. Let's boast him. I'm, I'm guilty. I, No, you should be happy. Pouring out. It does, that, that part of you that wants to say, well, I've done 30, that part has to die. And the part that says, I don't want to be happy for him. And you, and you feel it. You know it. I mean, you guys know I'm telling the truth. That part of you that doesn't want to be happy for him says, be happy for him. Don't boast about your achievements. It's not conceited. Well, I'm doing all this work. Since when did God say, I'm doing all this work? Since when did Jesus say, well, I'm going to die on the cross. What about you? No. No. What about... What about saying, I'll go do it. I'll serve. Or I'll clean it up. It's okay. I got it. It doesn't act improperly. It can be taken many different ways. It's not selfish. Since when did Jesus say, come on guys, you guys got to worship me. No, people bowed down and worshiped him because they loved him. He never asked for it. He did tell them, standing in authority, who he was. It's not provoked. You're really getting on my nerves. It's like, this is really upsetting me. Well, you know, since when, how, you know, there's a phrase in Hebrew. God has a long nose. Okay. Sometimes I say, oh, he's Jewish. He's got a long nose. Uh, I'm kidding. It's, it's a sense of he's not easily provoked. How many times... In the Old Testament, he he gives warning after warning after warning. His long nose, his long suffering, patience, and just, they did it again. They hurt their brother again. Okay, let me talk to them. They're doing the same thing over and over again. That's how we ought to be. It's like, you know what? This time I've had it with you because you, no. Not easily provoked. Does not keep a record of wrongs. This one. Do you uh, have a short account? Is there something you're holding on to? Something you can't seem to let go? Well, let me, let me remind you. If you gave your life to Christ. Assuming you did. He owns you. He forgives. How much more so we ought to forgive. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness. How many times have you heard a dirty joke? You didn't stop at work. And you didn't say, hey, that's not appropriate. Please stop. Or a person, hey, you know, that, that Sally, she smells funny. And, you know, her, she... Looks like doggy do. Hey, you know, Janie, that's not kind. Please stop talking like that. There's no joy in unrighteousness and tearing the person down. It rejoices in the truth. Hey, I love you. You're hurting yourself. You need to stop this. Okay. It bears all things. <sighs> okay. I'll do another task. In my work, even though I'm 
I mean, and you're, you're having this dialogue with the Lord, even though you're you're doing a bajillion things. Okay, I will I will rejoice. Believes all things. He's not doing right right now, but you know what? He is going to love. I because I'm praying for him. God, I know you're going to work in him. Hopes all things. Simply put, because Jesus is our living hope. Lord Jesus, I know you're going to work this for good. And endures all things. I will wait for you, Lord, no matter what. So, that's, you know, and, and it's interesting in, in verse 11, he says, When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Children do not, by nature, love. If you want to know what love is, go to the book of Matthew, read it to the book of John. Go back to the book of Matthew, read it to the book of John. You keep reading that and say, Jesus, show me what love is. There's an old 80s song. I want to low I, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Okay? We need to be asking that of Jesus Christ, of, of his Holy Spirit. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Okay? I, I by no means am saying I have it. I just, just, this is a message of the Lord. The Lord is giving. And he's saying it's time to take it to the next level. It's time to love. It's time to love as, as Jesus loves. Someone slaps you in the face. Say, thank you so much. I love you. This isn't good. This isn't right. Someone tells you, giving you an oppressive command. I love you. I'll be happy to serve. <sighs> Guys, if you don't know this love that was poured out for you, if you don't know what this is, the lengths that the sinless Son of God has done for you, He's waiting. To show you what that is. And to give you that love. That you don't have. It's a love. That can only come from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know that. The invitation. He calls. He says. Come to me. All you who are weary. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke. The idea is teaching. Upon you. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need to be born again. It starts with being born again. Born from above. Being a new new creation. Being a new creature. Folks, admit you're a sinner. If you've never asked Jesus into your life. Admit that you cannot do it. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that only He is the one who can save you, that He is the salvation of God Almighty, and that the only way to the Father is through Him. And confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that He is Lord, He is Master, and you'll be saved. And it's and it's a, it, it 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 seems so. Difficult only because it seems, because it is so simple. Your heart needs to be changed. Where you turn and you say, Father in heaven, I'm sorry. I've done it my way. Jesus, I have not loved with your love. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. Heal me. Be my Lord. Be my master. Come into my heart and change me. I believe you are my Lord and my Savior and my God. Baptize me and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may do the works you did for others, for my spouse, for my children, my community and my work, to be a witness of who you are. I don't know how to love you 
but I know you love me and I believe you love me. May I love you as you love me. May I love others as you love me. Jesus, I give you thanks that you have answered me and you've heard me. And I thank you. If that prayer resonates with your heart, uh, I apologize for speaking a little fast. Go back and, and re-listen to it. And, and talk to the Lord. He is good. Uh, folks, the situation around us worldwide um, is tumultuous. The only, only, only thing that can conquer it is love. Not an earthly love. Not a, even a human affection love. But it's the love of Jesus Christ. The only absolute definition of love. Of the pouring out. To the point of your death. Be it internal or external. But, but for something to live, something in us must die. Be it our time, our sleep, our food, patience, any one of those things. That's the kind of love that God loved us. For God so loved the world. This is John 3.16. He gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe on him will not perish. He will not be cast away. But he will have everlasting life. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your words. I thank you for the message that just came forth. I thank you for teaching us what love is, showing us. Thank you for resurrecting us from the grave because we were dead outside of you, but you being rich in mercy have come and healed us and raised us. to. Get, you didn't come to make bad men good. You came to raise dead men to life. Thank you, Jesus, that by your blood, by your death and resurrection and your Holy Spirit in us, we can be connected to you. Thank you, Lord, for our families. Bless everyone who hears this. Jesus, may they turn to you. May they worship you. May they give you all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.